Hey everyone, it's Friday the 7th of June and it's 7 o'clock in the evening. Coming up in today's video, I've got a box of diecast here, which I picked up today from a diecast guy. I've got three models from the previous diecast haul. Um, I just want to give you a little update on. I've also got three models here that I've bought separately from the diecast guy. They weren't part of the box. And there's just a few sort of um, random things that I want to talk about as well. So the video shouldn't be too long because this isn't a very large box of die cast anyway. So before we look at the box, here's that County Police comma van from Corgi. I found a bulb but I haven't managed to get this to work yet. I've been through it all, I've cleaned all the contacts, or at least the ones that I can access easily. But I don't know if that's a working bulb. It's just a random one I found in a box while looking for um, an ass a tray assortment of uh, torch bulbs and things that actually didn't exist because it's taken me until recording this video to actually remember I don't have that tray of bulbs anymore. I I kept the bulbs obviously, but I reorganised them into this which has been sitting on the floor down there so for the past week at least I've been looking for a tray of bulbs that doesn't exist this shows you how good my memory is doesn't it <laughs> yeah I can remember things clearly from my childhood I, I've got a great long term memory that's an absolute cack short term memory anyway um, but now I've found those bulbs, I will check this one as well, make sure it works and whatnot. I know the battery was good that I was using. Although, it is in relatively nice condition, you know, considering it's like a 1970s model, I believe. Um, unfortunately though, when I put the battery in, two of the um, supports for the battery to stop it rocking back and forth snapped off, so it does rattle about in there a little bit. Now, there was also that box of die cast that I got last weekend. These, the little uh, Motor Tamika models. Now, I did a bit of research on these. Um, Tamika did a whole um, variety of various motorised vehicles. And it looks like they actually went on like a track system. You could get a track system for them and set it up. And these would just run around the track. But... I can actually show you that these do work. I got them working. Batteries were only 99 pence. I'll show you what the batteries are in a minute. That one's got a bit of a stiff switch, but you just turn them on. Yeah, they don't steer or anything, so... So the... Dust cart works. So just to take a tank that's got a better switch on it. So they work. Uh, the dust cart, I did have to clean the battery terminals on. There's a wee bit of leakage on that. This is actually one of the batteries that came out of it. It has got signs of a little bit of leakage on the bottom, so this might have been the one. Yeah, yeah there's a little bit on this end as well. <clears throat> but these are just little 1.5 volt batteries. So they actually move pretty quick for a 1.5 volts. Mind you, the motors are only tiny little things in there. Um, now you do have to be careful with these because when I went looking for these, you do get some that look identical to this, and I believe they are actually the same size, but they're 12 volt. And I know the 12 volt ones have just got basically button cells stacked up in there. They've just stacked up a load of button cells to make 12 volts and then wrapped it in one of these. But yeah, that's the 1.5 volt version. That one's dead. Dead as a doornail, that one. <clears throat> so yeah, other than that, the box that I put aside, I think that's the box I want to get rid of down there. I can't remember, but there's still two boxes of die cast on the floor from the last video. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this box. 
So, we have another dinky. We have this thing. I'm not really sure what it is. Um, it just says Coast Guard. Coast Guard missile launcher. Now tell me why the Coast Guard, that's meant to rescue people, would have a missile launcher. I think that's meant to pop out of there. Um, and it seems to be wedged in there at the minute. Um, I could fix it because the base is actually screwed down on this one. But it's an interesting model. There's a bit of a crack out of the windshield I've just noticed. But this, d even though it's stinky, this does feel largely like a toy. To me, rather than, you know, a collectible model. Anywho, moving on. Um, now, when I looked at the photo, the diecast guy said, I thought these caravans were major rep, but they're not their corgis. And I don't have any corgi caravans, so I'm going to try and clean this one up a bit. I don't know what that is on the door and the window, but hopefully it'll come off. Maybe with some IPA. That one's in marginally better condition. That needs to clean as well. I'm hoping they will clean up. I could see a handful on the top in the photo that I actually did want. So, and of course, there's there's stuff buried in here that uh, I couldn't see and whatnot. And I've also realised that a lot of this was on his bench when I went there. I think yeah, it was last weekend to pick up all those dinkies and other vehicles that I picked up uh, that I showed in the last diecast haul video. Anywho, we have two of these, and I've already got a couple of these, so I'll probably put these on eBay. By the way, when I put diecast on eBay, I start everything at 99p, so it sells for whatever it sells for. If it sells for 99p, then that's what it sells for. <laughs> To me, something like that with the door missing and whatnot's not worth much more than that anyway. You can restore them, you can get reproduction doors for them, but, you know, I was having this conversation with the diecast guy, I think I mentioned this in the um, last haul video as well. You know, you can get the reproduction parts, but if you like the diecast guy, that's mostly in it for basically, you know, dealing in them, you know, buying to sell. It's not worth buying the reproduction parts. It's if you're a collector and you bought something say, like this, with um, the missing tracks and whatnot, and you want to restore it for your own collection, then yeah, it's worth doing that, because at least you can spend, you know, however many years... Um, enjoying it. it. looks a bit sun faded on the top. I think it's been near some sunlight. And that's actually a different colour to the one I put the tracks on. The one I put the tracks on has more of a um, orangey red. That's just more of a, you know, just a darker red. It's a drot excavator apparently, but I always thought excavators, you know, had the big booms on that dig the big holes, not uh, the shovel for loading. I don't, know. I don't know my machinery that well, so I could be wrong, but that's what I always thought. Right, next up. This is actually one that I wanted, because I could see it in the photo. It's a Corgi Scammel cement truck. Because I've not got this in the collection. And rarely, this has actually got a die-cast metal base on it. Quite a nice looking truck. I do like the old scabble trucks though, they are nice. This one is going to go on eBay because I've got a few of these already and this one's in very nice condition. Yeah, Ford Sierra Golden Wonder. From Corgi. Eh, I should be able to get rid of that quite easy. There's, you know, there's Ford Sierra enthusiasts and whatnot that would buy this and perhaps do a custom paint job on it or something. 
I know it's, you know, in my opinion, it would be way too good condition to actually do that too. But there are a dime a dozen, and corgis, especially corgis of this size, don't seem to have that much value. Anyway, this one is a corgi with wheels, and it's a Jaguar XJ6. Going by those wheels, I think this one's quite an early one. Maybe around the time when sort of Corgi was transitioning with Husky when they bought Husky out. I don't know. I just noticed that. I need to put a dab of super glue on there. Mind you, I could use that as an excuse to repaint it because one of the rivets has popped on the chassis. Front one's still intact. Uh, what else <laughs> Bought one of these when I was in high school. Well, this has actually got copyright 1997 on it, so it's probably an original one from that year. It doesn't say what it is. Um, and I can't remember if I've already got one in my collection of Hot Wheels or not. I don't think I have. Yep, 1997 Malaysia. Hot seat, that's what they call it. You can lift that up and... The steering wheel is a bloody plunger. Not the correct plunger for a toilet. And I only found that out because I watched a plumbing channel. <laughs> I always thought a plunger was a plunger. I didn't realise there was actually two different types for different uses. The one for like your, your sink drain, bath drain, shower drain and whatnot, which is the suction cup one that goes over the top. And then you've got a different one that's designed to go in your But anyway, I'm digressing. Talking about bloody plungers. <laughs> right, a little husky, uh, I think it's a Guy Warrior truck, I can't remember. It's even got the load in the back of this one. I don't think I've got a yellow one with the load in. I'll have to check that box of huskies. Uh, yeah, it's a Guy Warrior, I thought it was. I know extremely little about Guy Warrior trucks. In fact, I know very little about any truck. Then again, I don't know a lot about many vehicles, in fairness. Ooh. Oh, that is way better than my other telephone van. What is it? I know it's a major red. But I've got another one of these. I can't remember if it's in the same shade of yellow as this either. But I know I've got one with the telephone and whatnot on it. But my other one is rather play worn. That one... Oh, it's a Renault 4L. Another majorette. Savvy M, which I think is Renault. I don't have very many uh, majorette trucks like this. It's got a tow hook on the back as well. It's not in bad shape either. We've got, we've got another Dodge D. D100. Don't know, it just says state truck, but I do know it's a Dodge. And way back in the 1980s, we actually had a Dodge fire engine around here with the same nose as this one. I don't really need any more, but I am tempted to keep it. That's because it's a Bedford TK. Well, like I said, I don't really need it, so I probably will put this one up on eBay. I'm just digressing uh, again, otherwise I'll forget to tell you this story. Um, I had someone message me on Marketplace regarding one of the bicycles I've got up there. We arranged, you know, to, for them to come and have a look and whatnot. For some reason, I was convinced it was this afternoon, 5 o'clock this afternoon, so I was actually waiting outside for half an hour for them to turn up, and they didn't. So I got grumpy and went and got my dinner, and, you know, by half past six, I still heard nothing, no messages. Then I went and checked the messages and reread them, and it's tomorrow afternoon, not this afternoon. So I've had a few uh, dopey moments lately. Anywho. <laughs> 
Nice green Land Rover from Corgi. Oh, that nearly landed in the box on the floor. It bounced off the edge of it. It's not like a military green, or any dark green, that one. I really can't remember if I've got this. I'm pretty certain if I have, it won't be in as nice condition as this one. I know Matchbox did um, a version of this as well. This one makes noise. Can-Am Racer. Yeah, it's got the little uh, thing on the bottom so when a kid would push it along the floor it'd make the... <laughs> meant to be an engine sound. Can't believe I had snapped off after all these years. Uh, again, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the Mercedes bus. I'm pretty certain I do have this one. The stickers come off on that side. And it's on that side. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. My Citroen Diane from Corgi. That's another one I don't need. I've got it. And in this colour, I've got a couple of different colours of it. So it will be eBay. We've actually got a major version of it there. Like a Paris Dakar. Rally car, maybe. What it looks like to me. Very nice shade of pink. It's got number 27 on the hood. Ah yes, this was another one that I definitely wanted. The Renault Turbo. I can't remember what the Renault was, was it 21? Renault 11, I was way off. I believe I have got one of these, but it's, this one's in better condition. The other one I got is rather beat up. Yeah, I've got it. I just, I just literally just remembered I've got it. What have we got? 007 Lotus. A couple of these. Although I can't remember what the condition of the other ones are like, so... Before I decide what to do with that one, I'm going to have to check it. Got a car for the model railway here. A Mercedes. Convertible. It's a Cararama branded one. They're not bad, the Cararama ones, but they're not my favourite. That will, that will still do nicely on the layout, though. And we've got my second one of these, I believe. Missing the canopy on the back. That's common for them. And we want to call the double decker bus. Seagulls are making a lot of noise outside too. Ooh. Ooh. I saw a glimpse of this in the box earlier, but I didn't realise it was a major wreck. Mac McKean Jr. has got written on the Union Jack. What's on the door? Can I read it? Not on that one. What is it? G.S. Kamag. Does this ring a bell with anyone? Because I've never seen one of these. It's an interesting vehicle though. The uh, rear window canopy thing does open. Got the Union Jack on it, but it's uh, left hand drive. What have we got? A Lotus. Not Lotus, it's a Hot Wheels, but I keep thinking it is a Lotus, but it's just got uh, race bait written on the bottom. It also looks a bit like a Ferrari. I think they've combined the two <laughs> to make this one. Uh, oh, these seem to be a, top, a dime a dozen as well. These little things. I know they did a few versions of that. Can you find the other ones? No. 
What else have we got? Corgi London Cab. Hmm, they call it a taxi cab, but from what I've learned, taxi and cab are two different things. Some black on the windshield as well. The ladder keeps falling off of this one. We've got another ERF fire tender with ladder. But this one's got the different base on it. It hasn't got the metal base, it's got the plastic base. I'm pretty certain I don't have one with that base. This is another reason I want the box. It's actually in very good condition. And it's got the ladder. Another one. These are quite easy to come across as well. well this one is in very nice condition, in fairness. I'm going to check it with my other Pepsi truck on the shelf. Husky um, cement truck here. Is that a Foden? Foden? I think that's what that writing is. It is extreme. Even with a magnifying glass, it's ridiculously hard to read that. But there it is, anyway. I do like keeping me huskies. I haven't got very many of them. Two Citroen Dianes from Corby in slightly different shades of yellow. That's the one I just found with the black uh, roof as well. Yeah, I've already got, um, I'm pretty certain I've got this colour as well. I will we'll double check that, but that one I know I've already got. The same with this, it's a Ford Capri Fire Chief car. It's lost the Fire Chief stickers though. Still got the beacon and still got all the windows. They did a version of this with, I believe, a white roof, which I've also got. So, that might be another eBay item. Another one of these. Surprisingly, with the forks. They often go missing on these uh, little telehandlers. What do they actually call it? Something jack lift, I can't a sand sandrum? Sandrum? Definitely something along those lines. Jack lift. Basically a telehandler. For some reason when I was a kid we used to call it a teleport and I don't know why, because it didn't teleport anywhere, did it? Oh I did wonder if this was a matchbox or what was a little majorette? Jeep. Uh, Jeep Cherokee, I believe. Yep. And I've actually put Jeep with the trademark R on there. Nice. That's a keeper. We've got the Simca here. Yep. 1308. I've got an original one in silver in nice condition. I've also got a restored one in silver. I think I've got a blue one somewhere and now I've got an orangey one like this one. I think I've already got one but it's rough. That one's actually not bad. I wouldn't mind dabbing a bit of silver paint on these wheels though because they will come off. Uh, yeah I've already got this one. Majorette dumpy truck. Dumpy truck. Dump truck. I've no idea why it came out like that. Perhaps I just think I'm a kid again with all these toys. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, I actually thought this was an ambulance. It's a Coca-Cola van. The what?
Oh, it is 1998. That is in very nice condition for a 1998 model. Uh, I don't know what sort of van it is. I'm going to guess Ford. Does it actually say? Yes, Ford box truck. Right on the rear of the chassis, right there. And Ford box truck. Ah, look, this one is a little on the rough side. Oh, it's a Maisto. Another Citroen. That's a 2CV. Just really, I thought that was another Citroen Diane. That's not, that's a 2CV, that one. They look very similar, but the headlights are actually different. See, so yeah, it's got the separately fitted round headlights. And the Diane actually has them mounted inside the front fenders. And I actually think the Diane is a little... Yeah, there's actually quite a bit more difference between them. Now, I think I'm going to keep this Jaguar, even though I've got a few of them. Because I do not believe I've got the Jaguar symbol like that on the front. On the other ones, I think they're just plain green. But again, it's something I need to double check. A little motorcycle. I don't know who it's made by, but it is die cast. It's quite a nice little uh, casting as well. And another one of these buses. This is again, these are another one that's, you know, a dime a dozen. This is a Kidco one. Yeah, 1980. Made in Hong Kong, so it's got. A, I was going to say a die cast chassis, but I'm not actually convinced now. It's all pretty much plastic, but. And I think you put a key or something in the back there. Doesn't say what the car is, but it looks like a Datsun. <laughs> of some description. Which later became this, um, right, we've got a few in here now, oh, I don't really need any more of these. And I don't need any more of them. Now this is one I didn't have in my collection, I didn't actually know they did one in this colour. Got the blue and white one. Not that one. Uh, now I have got this one. which is made by, I believe they were British, Budgie, little Budgie Toys one. And a little matchbox, I believe it was a matchbox anyway. Right up in the cab, I can't. Light. Okay, you got a light boy. Yep, let's just have a quick peek under a light. Well, this is made in England by Lesney. But yeah, that's a little dump truck that I actually didn't have for a change. And that concludes the box. So, put all these back. In here now. Try and keep the ERF far tender up the right way so the ladder doesn't drop off again. So this now makes what? Three boxes that I've actually got to sort out and you know put all the vehicles in their designated homes and boxes. Right, still got three more over here. Show you because I couldn't resist it. I 
might go for the other two as well, just because they've got the original parts, or I believe they're the original parts, and not reproductions. He's got some in a couple of carry cases as well that I'm interested in. Right, so I'm going to put these in here as well. A few random ones on the desk too. Let's, let's chuck that one on the floor then. So here's the first one. Now some people may not believe who this is actually made by. It's made by Lego. I do believe this is actually the same scale as 00 gauge model railway. Yep, that has actually got Lego written on them. Now, it is plastic. It's a very nice looking model for plastic though. And back in the 60s, instead of having Lego cars, they made these to go with the Lego houses that they had. In fact, I've got one built up somewhere with a garage on the side that would have a, you know, a Lego car like this. I actually thought they were metal. And I've seen them on eBay and they do sell for a lot of money because these are very hard to get. Um, so yeah, that wasn't actually cheap. Probably what I would have spent roughly on eBay, you know, that plastic thing was five pounds. Actually, I would have probably had to have forked out more than that on eBay. Anywho. We have got what is now the best pipe truck in my collection. And with what we believe are the original three of the original pipes. And yeah, they don't feel the same plastic as the reproduction ones, so pretty certain they are the genuine ones. And what is now officially my best girder truck as well. Complete with a pile of girders on it. Yeah, loads of steel eye beams and whatnot on it. Now he's got the uh, scaffolding truck, which I've already got, and he's got the sight hut truck as well, which I've already got two of. Um, but looking at them, I'm pretty certain the one with the sight hut truck is original. Um, but I'm not sure what to do with the, the scaffolding truck because these were a five at each. Um, so do I spend another ten pound and go and get those two and potentially have some trucks in very nice condition with the original sight hut and everything on it? I'll think about it. I mean, he's going to be at Alsham Car Boot tomorrow morning. Um, so I'll drop him a message in the afternoon. Well, no doubt if I want to, I can just buzz across and go and pick him up. He's literally... A... If I walked it, I could be there in five minutes. He's not far from here. Uh, besides, he's got a couple of uh, matchbox cases with a few in, but I, just, I didn't think to go to the... ATM and get a bit more cash out, so I didn't have enough on me. Um, but yeah, I had a couple in there that I would have had as well. Right. One job I do need to do tomorrow as well is go and take the moped to uh, fill it up with gas because it's running out. Fill up. I'm not in America, I'm in the UK. It's petrol here. Petrol. It's because I've spent so many years online talking to so many Americans and watching so many American YouTube channels. I think it's just rubbed off on me now. <laughs> Anywho, uh, speaking of the moped, I do have a cam. As you will know from a video I put up earlier in the week. Uh, which was... More than anything, it was just a test video to see how well this worked, which it did work well, but it was noisy. And I found out why, because this case for it, 
hasn't got the clamp so it doesn't hold everything nice and tight and I was just using a rubber band because I thought that was all I'd need you know just to keep this shut so that doesn't go flying somewhere um, but it turns out it wasn't holding it tight enough and it was doing that while I was riding along um, so I did a test ride again the other day where I used zip ties around it. I know it's annoying having to cut them off every time I need to get the camera out, but they're cheap. And it did a better job at holding this nice and tight, so... Yeah, but if you're just wondering what the camera is that I was using, there it is. Bought this from a car boot sale in North Walsham last year for a fiver with this and a load of other accessories and things in a bag. No memory card. Um, it's currently got a 32 gig memory card in it and I don't know where that came from. I must have bought it new for this. Because that is not the sort of memory card I'd have had laying about. Uh, speaking of, um, the day after I put that video up, the moped ride, riding to my mother's again, early one morning and little LED lights were flashing away saying it was recording but when I got to mum's it would not turn off and it actually got stuck on 14 minutes I had to take the battery out um, it recorded everything up until that point but for some reason despite the LEDs flashing telling me it was still recording the camera just locked up and wouldn't turn off and then it did it again the following morning uh, but stopped at 12 minutes um, which I don't know why but that made me suspicious of the SD card the micro SD card so what I did that day I got back here I think it was Wednesday pretty certain it was Wednesday um, and I swapped the micro SDs over because I had a I've got a 2 gigabyte one kicking around here somewhere and then I just left the camera on top of the PC, just randomly recording, just left it to record. And I got right up until 35 minutes in. Um, I thought, well, it must be the memory card. So I thought, right, well, let's format the memory card, the 32 gig one that I put in this, and then see what happens. Um, so that's exactly what I did. Formatted it, stuck it back in the camera, left that to record again, and it just carried on perfectly fine. Um, so my theory is that there must have been a perhaps a corrupted spot on that memory card. So when the camera was recording, it just got to that spot, got to the corrupted spot, and couldn't do anything else. So it just froze the camera. The camera just froze. Uh, I can't think of any other reason why that would do it and I did notice as well that when I formatted the uh, memory card I had more than double the amount of space on it to record on it it's, the camera was telling me before I formatted it that I had like three, around three and a half hours of recording time when I formatted it it was like eight hours recording time I was like whoa that's a bit of a jump just from formatting it so there must have been some dud files or something hidden on there because when I looked I couldn't see no files on the camera but, uh, yeah. that's what I can find now and despite only charging it like once last year then it's just been sitting around the flat ever since that battery was still holding charge before I even put it on charge to put it on the ped for the first ride I've still got part two of that one to put up as well I haven't forgotten about that. I just can't remember where I put the footage. <laughs> so there'll be a part two if I haven't done a done thing and deleted it. Right, while I've got the camera on, is there anything else? Um, I'm about to do a, put a traffic cone video up. So I've just edited this together. I need to go up tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I've not done a video for the gaming channel because I've just not uh, felt it today, really. <laughs> I did try, but it just wasn't going to plan to the point where I just thought, 
sod it. <laughs> I'll take a day off. Um, which probably wasn't a bad thing because I got some stuff done out in the brick shed like this video that I got asked for a couple of videos ago. Um, I believe his YouTube name is Stock Pocky, if I pronounce that correctly. Um, yeah, he's a recent subscriber to the channel, so welcome to the channel. And uh, he also collects traffic cones and other traffic management stuff. Um, somewhere in Europe. I'm sure he'll correct me in a comment, but I'm thinking Germany? But I could be wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got a lot more cones than I have. I thought I had a lot of cones. I knew I've got a long way to go to catch him up. <laughs> but yeah, he requested um, a cone video, and I've had a request last year from another YouTuber, but I just couldn't get in the shed. Um, but uh, the scaffolding was taken down yesterday, so I thought I'd make the most of it and go out there today and just have a bit of a sort out in the shed while I'm at it. My I actually binned quite a lot of stuff because I just had enough of it being in there. Right. Well, I think I'll leave the video here then instead of just rambling on. So, thanks a lot for watching, everyone. You know, as always, please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. And, uh,. Maybe consider subscribing, because this is quite a random channel. There's diecast, there's flashing lights of, well, there's just lots of different lights. Traffic cones, computers, Lego, here and there, you know. So if you like quite a variety, then maybe consider subscribing. It's totally free, doesn't cost a penny. Um, and in the video description, I will put links to my other two YouTube channels. I have a gaming channel, so if you like gaming, then feel free to go and check that one out. And I've got a channel dedicated to all the Lego as well. That's why you don't see too much of it on this channel. Um, plus a link to my Discord server and my Twitch channel, so feel free to check those out as well. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.